we're, we're just going to finish up rather quickly now. Okay. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> so <coughs> we're, we're still talking about step number five, which is, um, well, uh, it's, it's we're uh, coding the no I guess it's that's just that's the information system um, okay this is basically part of integrating the project into the organization and the important part of the project is the communication plan because uh, if you're not communicating what you're actually doing or you're the, the customer doesn't get the right information then they're not going to be satisfied with the project so one of the most important success criteria of a project will be the communication plan or the, you could call it the dissemination uh, part of the project. And um, <coughs> the first step in that is uh, to identify the stakeholders. That is, who is it that's interested in the project and why are they interested in the project? They usually have different types of roles. So you need to identify who it is that you're trying to give inf information to. And they showed some uh, chart here which shows that some stakeholders may have a little interest in the project and some may have high interest. Some may be low in power and some may be high in power. So they classify uh, uh, the professionals that might be working on the work packages within the project would be someone that is has a very strong interest in the project. And they also have um, a lot of power in, the, in how this successful the project is. So uh, then you would put them in the manage closely sector. And then if you have uh, the management, the top senior management of the company, you want to keep them satisfied, uh, but uh, you don't they so, but they may not have such interest in the in the particular project, but they have a lot of power, so you want to keep them satisfied. And then operations manager, which might be the unit or line managers uh, within the company, they might not have uh, so much that they have to do. At, they might be interested in it, but they don't have a lot of power, so they're the line managers. So this is the top managers, and this is the line managers. And so um, you need to keep them informed. And maybe the line managers are supporting the professionals that are working on the project. And then you have the, uh, um, the general public that might have some use for this uh, project, or they may not. They may not be directly uh, benef benefiting from the project. Uh, so this could be the public relations office for the company or the legal office. And so maybe they have little interest and little power in how the project goes. And so you just uh, give them general information. <coughs> so after you identify uh, the kind of information that you need to give to your target uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, you're identifying who they are and what they need. Um, then you need to identify the information, specific informa information needs that they need have. So this is... Uh, uh, several uh, things that they might need is on page 121. It uh, could be a project status report. could be changes in the scope of the project. If uh, we mention that in uh, step two, you're identifying what you can accept in terms of, or how you would make decisions in terms of changing the scope of the project. And um, uh, gating uh, decisions, action items, deliverable issues, uh, team status meetings, accepted request uh, changes, and milestone reports. So these are all different types of information that can come along during the project and you might have to uh, give this to different uh, stakeholder groups within the project. It could be people working on the project. It could be people that are, will end, be an end user of the project. Where does the information come from? That's uh, sources, or step number three. 
and um, <coughs> you can think about how is this information going to be collected. Is it collected in uh, team meetings? Is it collected uh, when people are working on the project? So uh, there's, there can be different sources of information. It can come from, there can be changes in the scope that comes from the end customer. It can be changes in uh, what is actually, how far we are, like are we going to meet the, the deliverable date or is there going to be a delay? So this can come from different uh, places in the organization. And then the uh, dissemination modes, uh, the, how is the information spread around in the <coughs> public relations department? Maybe you're just giving them a, a press release once a month to tell them about the progress of the, of the uh, meetings or the progress of the project. But in other cases, you might be sending email around to project participants or you might be having uh, Skype meetings or whatever, but there's different ways in which the information can be shared. And then you have uh, responsibility and timing. <coughs> so um, uh, who's going to send out the information and when are they going to send it out? Some uh, for big projects, they might have uh, monthly meetings that uh, people have to attend and it might be up for the, to the project manager for the whole project to organize when these meetings take place. Or there may be group meetings that are uh, among people that are working on a particular work package. And so there's, uh, depending on the, on the uh, work breakdown uh, matrix uh, and responsibility matrix, uh, you can det to determine uh, when uh, you have to have meetings and when are you sharing information uh, for the project. There can be like monthly newsletters that go out to the uh, different stakeholder groups, the general public. There can be uh, closed group uh, information that only goes out to certain um, members of the project. So it depends. So the communication plan has to answer these questions. Uh, and <coughs> uh, so what is the information needs? Who's going to receive it? Uh, what method is going to be used to share it? Uh, what are the access restrictions? That means who, what's, what parts of the information are closed to the group or what parts are open to other, because uh, there's different stakeholders with different types of access rights. And um, <coughs> when is it going to be communicated and how will it be communicated? And so this is like a summary of a communication plan. Uh, you can have different types of information, uh, milestone reports, uh, project status reports, team status reports, issue reports, escalation reports when things uh, uh, you ne might need a larger budget, for example. Outsourcing performance, accepted change request, oversight, uh, gate decisions. <coughs> and this would be who's uh, receiving the report, who needs the report, and <coughs> how often do they get these types of reports. Uh, some of them may be on a regular basis, others only when you need to. Uh, the communication method, a lot of emails, you could have person face-to-face -face meetings and uh, the provider who's actually sending out the information, what is the source of the information. So you might have the project manager or the work package manager, which could be a team leader and or you could have <coughs> the, like a, a, another manager within the company. Okay, so um, that's it. The main uh, terms in this chapter are cost accounts. Cost accounts are uh, associated with the work packages. Miles and stones are uh, ways of measuring your progress and on your deliverables as you proceed through the through the uh, project. The organization breakdown structure is uh, how the different uh, resources or people in the organization are working on the different activities in the work breakdown structure. Scope
scope creep is when you are changing the requirements of the um, project beyond the original uh, scope definition. Uh, the project priority matrix and is how you uh, choose when what kind of changes to the original scope you can accept to the scope definition. Uh, responsibility matrix is who is working on which activities and the <coughs> scope statement. Um, this is um, uh, no, it's not used formally, but it can be saying that you can go ahead with the project. And um, the process breakdown structure and the work breakdown structure are basically the same types of tools. They're hierarchical tools to break down the deliverables down to the work package level. And in terms of the work breakdown structure, it's usually it's like it's been associated with products. But it's when you talk about a process breakdown structure, you're actually talking about a work breakdown structure. So this has to do with the process in terms of phases of the process. And the deliverable would be what comes out of that phase of the project, of the, of the process. <coughs> and in terms of like instead of um, making a physical product. And then the work package is the lowest level of the work breakdown structure, where all of the activities are defined. And with all of these um, work packages, they have someone who is responsible, a work package leader. They have a time scale when it starts, when it ends. They have a cost account associated with it, how much you can spend on it. And they have a list of activities. And the out expected outcomes or deliverables of those activities are all defined at the work package level. So that's where most of the stuff is defined. OK, um, so you should have uh, enough to make a stab at the homeworks. And next week, we will talk about the exercise number one. I'll take everybody's homework. Um, I'll print out the ones I get by 10 o'clock. And then I'll bring them to lecture. And then we'll exchange them in lecture. And we'll be grading each other's homeworks in the lecture. So that's what we'll do next time, in addition to talking about chapter 5 next time. Okay, so that's it for today.